Okay, so at this point, I've done quite a bit of refined painting, and it makes a big difference on top of my base color layer. I haven't done any of it to the suit jacket. Most of his hair and forehead is still just the base color. And so I, I need to look at it and really decide, okay, what areas now do I need to work on to bring it all up to the same level? So say this is finished in here. How do I bring up this area, all this area, all those areas of visual interest up to the same level of finish? And I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it on a new layer. And I'll, tell, I'll show you why. So the problem with refined painting is it takes a while. And if without the base color layer, this is all there is. This is all I've done in the last half hour. You know, but it makes such a difference because it's targeted and it's informed and it's it's merging edges and defining um, parts of the face and anatomy and the structure and the expression. So it's all in the subtlety. But this shows me very clearly the areas I haven't worked on. Right. The other thing is my sketch. My sketch makes quite a difference, whether it's on or not. And at this point, I could even try bringing my sketch over the top of my refined painting. Unlocking it, it's on multiply mode, right? And kind of blending it in. I could even try, instead of multiply mode, I can try something like overlay. I can try soft light. I can see pin light and see how that kind of alters the structure. So the beauty of working from a scan of a sketch is that all of this can be useful to your finished product. In fact, before I go further, I might take that overlay layer of my sketch, duplicate it, turn my original one back to 100% with multiply, right, and move that down below. So now basically my sketch, this overlay layer, is sitting on top and can inform what I do. Can't decide if I like overlay better or pin light better. Let's do overlay, but let's uh, get rid of the, the bright white. So I'm going to use my magic wand. I'm going to uncheck contiguous and just select the white shapes, delete them. So what overlay does is it uses my sketch and it puts these, these weird <laughs> distortions on top, but they're all based on my pencil marks. I can also play with the layer styles because this is just my sketch marks now and I can fill them with a gradient. Play with the opacity of that. I can give it a little bit of texture. And you can see what, what that can do 
to my painting. So there's a lot of experimentation you can do. Yeah, I don't like the bevel and emboss too much. It's too extreme, but this is going to be helpful to my digital painting. One more change. I'm just going to make the gradient a little bit lighter here. All right. So now I'm going to lock that. That's on top. I'm going to paint under that. I don't need my face map anymore. And I'm going to work on the finishing, finishing touches. On a new layer. Just brute painting again. Might as well erase the white from my multiply layer since it's not doing anything anyway. There we go. All right. Save my work. And I'm back at it. Now focusing on these areas that aren't accounted for at all in my refined painting yet. And now with this overlay of my sketch just slightly, I have even more tones and textures to pull from. But there's no short shortcut for just your brushwork and really building up the textures and the colors. And just look at his his dome of a brow. There's a lot going on in there. So much of painting is finding your palette, your range of colors. And I haven't had to go to this well for a long time now because I've built up enough variation using, you know, a slightly low opacity brush that all those colors are kind of everywhere. They're all accounted for. And my sketch being overlaid over the top slightly encourages me to push out to the edges, really showcase all the values and colors everywhere I can. Let's go to this. So I like how bold this watercolor is with its colors intermixed in all the different values. White hair isn't as interesting as multicolored hair. And yet as long as I keep the values similar from a distance, it will communicate clearly. It'll just look a lot more interesting from up close. And he's a romantic George Bernard Shaw, so you need his portrait to feel dynamic, forceful. You can do little flyaways. Let 
He has impressive eyebrows. Now the reason I'm doing the finishing touches layer on top of my refined painting layer is I want to feel free to overlap with my refined painting and not worry about messing up things as I'm stealing color that have already worked well. And really, I tend to like it the more painting layers I make. It gives me more <laughs> options later for playing around. So I'm trying to bring it all up to the same finish. I'm trying to get this finished to 11.19 now um, in time to submit by about 11.30. A painting that's that's decent. This would be kind of the digital sketch that I might use to inform a traditional drawing or painting. It's plenty good for using as a uh, an avatar for social media. That's a common kind of entry level commission for digital artists. So it's good to have your way of doing it. And this is my way at the moment of working with portraiture. And then the way I would turn this into a, a finished digital art, fine artwork, is treating it almost like a photo and playing with maybe some compositing of textures, maybe incorporating, I like to do research on this on the subject matter. So researching George Bernard Shaw's notes, maybe his sketches and kind of compositing those in into the background. Right now, I just want you focused on kind of des designing your method, your visual vocabulary for digital paint. Every once in a while, you want to steal a bright color because when you only ever steal from yourself, the colors start to get a little muddy. So it's good to bring in some pure color every once in a while. And then that reinvigorates your palette. Yet another reason I like to steal from outside sources. So even though I'm doing a lot of kind of darkening areas I know should be light and then knocking them back down with light, it, it builds that texture. So that the forehead doesn't feel like an area that's just wasn't dealt with as much as the others. Now, if you find that you want to do a certain curve and it's just not very comfortable, you can use the hand tool and then within the hand tool in the drawer, there's the rotate view tool. And that's not actually rotating your subject matter, it's just rotating your canvas so that you can paint at a more comfortable angle. I believe Z ZBrush was the first to introduce that feature. And I'm glad Photoshop has put it in. can also help with repetitive stress injuries, which digital painters can often have. All right, let's see. Yeah, that makes a big difference. 